going on guys here we go again we got you already know what time it is you already know what time it is it is quick mcat question time 3500 accelerator magic <laughs> okay and the the whole thing i just said okay that's the title of what we're doing here all right but anyways i'm not gonna repeat the whole thing but what we're doing okay we're, we're doing here is we're going through mcat questions as quick as possible because these Discrete questions should not take too much of your time. They should not. So, here's the first question. Okay, there's going to be four questions, I believe. So, here's the first question. Pick your answer. Write it down. Second question. Pick your answer. Write it down. Third question. Pick your answer. Write it down. Fourth question. Pick your answer and write it down. These are the CP section questions here. Hopefully you guys get them all right. See where you went right. See where you went wrong. Let's do this now. Okay. Electronegativity, electron affinity, and ionization energy all increase across a periodic table row and decrease down a periodic table group. Why does acidity not follow this trend? You guys should know the bare mnemonic. B, E, A, R. Basicity, electron affinity, ionization energy, electronegativity, acidity, atomic radius. Boom. It's just like that, okay? They're saying that, you know, all these electron affinity, ionization energy, and electronegativity increases up and to the right. They're saying, hey, why does acidity not follow this trend? Okay, let's see why. Acidity relates to the ability of the nuclear protons to attract hydrogen atoms. No, no, no. No. Not the protons don't attract hydrogen atoms. That is not what happens. Acidity relates to the stability of the conjugate base, yes. And larger atoms form more stable conjugate bases even when they are less electronegative than smaller atoms. Correct. That is correct. All right. The strong acid, a strong acid, okay, a strong acid has a stable conjugate base. Okay. Acidity is not influenced by nuclear shielding and effective nuclear charge, while other trends are. It is influenced by those, okay? Remember, the easier it is to take... Look, think about it, guys. Think about this, all right? Let's say you're an atom. Let's say this is your nucleus, okay? And let's say here are your valence electrons flowing around, all right? The easier it is to remove this, the easier it is to remove that, the stronger the acid. But bam ba bam ba bam Let's keep going. Acidity increases across a periodic table row like the other trends, but it increases down a group because the electronegativity of the elements approaches that. No, no, no. It doesn't matter about electronegativity. Okay. It just matters how stable that conjugate base is. That's what makes a strong acid a strong acid. Okay. Let's keep going. From one point in space, point S, to another point T, electric potential increases continuously from 100 volts to 200 volts. Which of the following must be true of the electric field near these two points? Okay, so they're telling us here's S and here's T, okay? This one is at 100 volts. This one is at 200 volts, all right? We have a low electric potential, and here we have a high electric potential, okay? If we're traveling from a low to a high electron potential, do negative or positive charges do this? Negative charges go from a low to a high, okay? Another way you can look at it is think if we have, let's say we have two plates here, okay? But bam, but bam, this is a negatively charged. This is a positively charged plate, okay? This is a high electric potential. This is a low electron potential. If I throw a negative charge right in the middle, where is it going to travel to? It's going to travel to the right, to the positive. Therefore, this negative charge goes from a low electric potential to a high electric potential. And if I do the opposite with the positive charge, let's say I throw him right in the middle, where is he going to travel? He's going to travel this way. He's going to go from a high electric potential to a low electric potential. And since this is what's happening here, all right, that would mean that this S is a negative charge and this guy is a positive charge. So the field lines would look like this, okay? You know the field lines for a negative charge look like this, all right? And you know the field lines for a positive charge look like 
this. Okay, this looks bad, but you get the point here. So the lines are traveling from T to S. So field lines point not away, not towards, from not from S to T, from T to S. That is where they travel from T to S, guys. That's how we do it. Let's keep going. What are the units of the rate constant K for a second order reaction? All right, this is pretty easy. You guys should get this right, okay? How do I do this? How do I find the units for rates? All right, what about for first, second, zeroth order? How do I find the units for that, Eric? Tell me. This is how you do it. Okay, the rate, this guy is always going to be equal to M over S. All right, and let's say that we have a, let's do first order for now. Hold on, I got to sneeze. All right, never mind, it passed. Oh, <coughs> oh there it is. <laughs> that's, that's weird. Okay, whatever. Let's keep going. So let's say we have a, well, should we do a zeroth or a first order? Let's do a zeroth order, okay? Let's say this is zeroth order. What's a to the zero? That's going to be one. Okay, so we can just write k here. So the units for k for a zeroth order is molarities per second. What about a... Um, first order, I'm pretty sure you get it, but what about a second order? Two for second order, what's gonna happen now? Well, we know the ray is always gonna be molarity per second. All right, here's K. A is gonna be molarity. Okay, that's how concentration is measured in molarity. Squared, okay, okay, K. This is gonna be your M squared. Okay, so this is times. This will be your m over s. What are we going to do now? Well, we have to divide by molarity squared from both sides. All right. Divide by molarity squared. All right. This gets canceled. Oh, this gets canceled. But bam, this is k. Boom, boom. We have 1 over molarity times second. Which one corresponds to that? No, no. Um. All right. They kind of try to confuse you here by flipping it like that. I don't like how they did that. That's unnecessarily confusing. I mean, yeah, moles over liter is molarity, but they didn't have to do that. Okay, that's, that's just so extra. This is a uh, second square. That's definitely not going to be it, so it's C. I don't like how they did that, but you should know that it's C from what we just did here, okay? Two circular pipes both have radii of 3.5 meters. They both steadily eject water horizontally. And the water from each pours onto a measuring grid 5 meters below. The stream from the first pipe lands in the measuring grid 20 centimeters away from a position directly below the pipe mouth. And the stream from the second pipe lands 5 centimeters away from a position directly below its pipe mouth. How long would it take the second pipe to pour out as much water as the first pours out in one minute? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay. You don't have to, you don't even have to care about the... This is extra information. All right, they told us one minute, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so this is what's happening, guys, all right? Here you have one pipe. Okay, I drew that bad, let me do that again. Here you have one pipe, all right? It's water's coming out, cool. And the first pipe, they told us it landed 20 meters away, right? Yeah, oh, 20 centimeters. And then the other one, it landed how much? I think five centimeters away. Yeah, five centimeters away. So it's going horizontally, it lands five centimeters away. Because this one is flowing out at a faster rate than this one, okay, that's why it goes farther, because the water's flowing farther. The water's flowing faster, so it's flowing farther away. Okay, 20 centimeters. This is only five centimeters, okay? So you can say, since they have both the same diameters here, this one is flowing four times as fast as this guy. Four times as fast as five centimeters. So if it's flowing four times as fast, this would need four minutes to catch up to this. Okay. That's it. That's it. You don't have to, don't jump into equations right away, guys. Try to take a look, understand what the question's asking, and then make a decision. Hey, should I jump into equations or should I not? In this case, you did not have to. All right. 
So that's it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed another round of MCAT quick, discreet question 5300 magic. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Join MCAT University.